checking our homework. What questions do we realize we now have because we didn't know how to do it the first time around? Mm. I, I thought on Tuesday we would get the color pencil. Mm -hmm. I thought on Tuesday we would get the color pencil. It's never been on Tuesdays. It's always been when we do an accuracy check, which it is a check for accuracy. Which one are you saying, Trey? Number seven and eight. Number seven and eight? If I have x divided by negative three is greater than negative ten ninths. You multiply. By? Negative three. Okay. You have x is greater than. Why did I put less than? Oh, divide by negative. Well, you multiply by negative. Multiply both sides of the inequality by a negative. Okay. Right? And the negative, or the two negatives are coming positive. And I just simplified. You could multiply and divide. But 3 and 9 have a 3 in common. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So it's a positive 10 thirds. Okay. Notice the, the steps are pretty clear on number eight. You distribute. I use my subtraction property of inequality. Use my um, addition property of inequality. And I have my final answer. The way I started though, I did um, plus six. Okay. So you can do that instead. Um, So you added 6, and then I'm guessing that means you subtracted 3x later? Uh, yes, sir. So negative x is less than or equal Wait, to? No, I didn't, I didn't subtract, I added. Ah, uh, that's your issue. What's 3x plus 3x? It'd be 6x, not 0. I need 3x minus 3x. Is that what messed you up? Yes, sir. Got to pay attention to that. If it's a positive, you have to subtract to make it a zero. And that's, what, and that's one of the reasons why I brought up those identities before. You really need to pay attention to, am I creating that zero or that one? If not, you need to do something else. Okay? Any other questions we need to talk about before we move on? All right. Figure out how many questions you got correct, put your grade, and date your grade. Oh. What, Duan? I made three. You got three? Hey, it's better than zero. And here's something you have to remember, guys. On the accuracy stuff, well, one, we really should be scoring higher if we're making sure we're paying attention and asking the questions the days before. Because remember, there's two or three days in a row where I'm just checking to see if you attempted it. And if you attempted it, you're getting hundreds on those. And then... This should be a breeze because we've already practiced it several times, right? Okay? So I'm going to move forward since there's no questions. We're going to finish 4.6 taking sides uh, all together. And I need you to take notes on this because this is going to cover some really important ideas that will be on the test tomorrow. And then you're actually going to use a performance assessment where you're working within your small group to review and get better prepared for the test. What's your question? Um, and that's after we go over the inequalities understanding check. All right. What are the objectives? Yeah, we're not doing those things. We're going over this. All right. Really quickly, I want to talk about number nine altogether because I don't think we got there in our small groups yesterday, did we? No, Okay, so let's look at A. We already did it. Most students did not. I did Not in this class. You're on the wrong page. Oh, this is within the task, not on the homework or the practice materials. There you go. So, first off, they're trying to answer this question, right? 4s plus 6 is greater than or equal to 6 plus 4s. What do you think about this inequality? Do you think that would sometimes be true, always be true, or never be true? It's equal. It's equal. Aren't the, both, the two sides exactly the same? So is this going to be sometimes true, always true, or never true? Always true. It's equal, right? That's what this bottom line right here says. It's always true. Okay, so always true. Now, this is where we start getting into some really critical ideas for inequalities. 
When we find solutions, what are solutions? What do we mean by that? Values that make the equation true. Or the so, so inequality true, oh, right? Yeah. Well, if this inequality is always true, what numbers will make this inequality true? Three. Well, yeah. Three. Any number. Any, Any number, right? That's what we want to recognize here. It doesn't matter what the number is, this thing is always true. So let's think about it on a number line. How would you do that? Would you go both ways? You could do negative, because well, it's going to be true. I was going to say, think about it this way. What did you just say would make this inequality true? Anything. Anything. So what would I shade? All, All of it. it. All of it. Start it. Uh, Not starting anywhere. It's all, all stuff to the left. It's anything in between. And it's to the right. Notice it's always true, so everything is a solution, or every number. And so if you get a statement that is always true, every number is a solution. And we do want to practice writing set notation for this and interval notation. So I'll wait a second for you to copy that graph down or that number line down. So for set notation, how would we start this set notation? Bracket. What type of bracket? Open square. My open back. Uh, open bracket. What? Wait. Oh, I thought y'all were talking about the uh, what's the name? The the line. No line. Oh no no no. Set notation. Not 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 the um. Every bracket. Not the curly one. Not the curl. That one right there. The first one. set you, notation. So both of these are used for interval notation. Oh. Remember, the bracket means that the number can be equaled. The parenthesis means that the number cannot be equaled. Will it be that little squiggly line? Whenever it's set notation, we start with that squiggly line, that curly bracket is what it's called. And then as soon as you start that, that means the set. So the set of what? The S. Right, that's the variable we're dealing with, the equal. set of S. Greater, I mean, equal or uh, it's something else, and the whole number, something like that. There's a vertical line, which, how do we read that? Hold up. No. The set of S when? When, And that's when I'm going to talk about what number set it's in. When S is an element, right? If you do not have this down, you need to take this note right now so you can study this later. I thought this one is equal. This, uh... S is equal to. It's not equal to anything. It says it's an element of some number set. If I'm shading every number that there is, what number set am I dealing with? All of them. Real. Real. When we talk about all the numbers, all the decimals, all the fractions, all the everything, we're talking about the real number set. So it would be the set of S when S is an element of the real numbers. What would we do for interval notation? Okay, but remember the bracket means that you can equal something. What is the minimum value that we're talking about here? If it's going to keep going to the left, what's it going to get to? Negative infinity. Okay, the minimum value is negative infinity. And the hey. maximum. Yeah, okay. It's going to be infinity. Positive infinity. Hey, Ronald, have you ever met RJ? Sorry, I know you prefer to go by RJ. I'm still trying to get you set. RJ, have you ever met anyone who has gotten all the way down to infinity? Or negative infinity? No? Trey, what about you? Yes. Who? You count it? No. No, you can't do it. The whole definition of infinity is that it's all the way. Like, it keeps going beyond what you can count to. It's a number that is beyond all numbers. So can you ever equal infinity? Yeah, no. no. So we need to use a parenthesis. Okay. What did I say parentheses? Yep. But I did say so that's what I need to say. So what do y'all think about with B? It'd be different because it's a it's a plus. Okay, it is. It's definitely different. But 
Then let's try to solve it. How would I solve this inequality? Uh, 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 minus 2. Okay. Well, it's already minus 2. Well, yeah. Plus 2. So might maybe add 2. Here's something I do want to point out, because this is one thing I always pay attention to. Notice how the variable has the same coefficient? So that's something that jumps out at me. I'm going to create my identity yeah, there, because what is 3r minus 3r? Zero. All right? Smart, man. And then that's zero. What's zero plus five? Five. Five is greater than? Oh, negative two. Is that going to be sometimes true, always true, or never true? Always. Always. Because two is a negative. So if this is always true, then what would I shade on my number line? Uh, everything. Everything, right? Does it matter what R is? No. No. What solutions would it be? All real numbers. The interval notation would be negative infinity to infinity. So we need to notice that if we get to a statement that is always true, right? If I say r is greater than 5, that's only true when r is greater than 5. But if I get to a statement that is always true, it doesn't matter what r is. We go with that idea. Yes, sir. And so everything we said over for a would go for b as well. But c is a little bit different. Okay, so I'm going to distribute. Notice how we have a variable with the same coefficient again? Yeah, you can do plus 3. Well, you can do minus 4. Minus that 4? Yeah. See, what I was paying attention to, remember I said earlier, if I have the variable with the same coefficient, I'm going to tr try to create the identity out of that, the 0. Is there a way to create the identity out of this 4n? <laughs> None? Oh, yes. Yeah. What can I do? Plus 4. 4n plus 4n? Well, That's no, going to create a 0? It's going to be uh, minus 4. Okay, so I need a, not just minus 4, minus 4. And. Okay. I was saying that I saw that negative 3. Yeah. So notice that's a 0. 4n minus 4n is? 0. So 0 plus 4? Four? 4. Is less than? Negative 3. Is 4 less than negative 3? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. no. So is that going to be sometimes true, always true, or never true? Never true. That's never true. So on the flip side of something being always true, there is never true. So does it matter what I plug in for n? No, no it's always going to be false. So what would I put on the number line? Why nothing? Everything. Remember, you said it's never going to be true. So what is a solution? Oops. Nothing. So what are you going to shade? Zero. Remember, if it's never true, is zero going to make that inequality oh, true? No. So this is what we want to pay attention to. If we get to a statement that is never true, that means that there are no, no. no solutions. solutions. And a little symbol that we use for when there are no solutions is, a, it looks like a circle with a line through it, a slash through. That means no solutions. It really, de it by definition, means the null or the empty set. But notice that I put anything inside of there? So there's no solutions. There's nothing inside of that set. Okay? Which, oh, number line that is for? That's for C? This is for C, yeah. Right. RJ, you doing okay over there? You doing okay? Okay. Let's look at number 10 all together. Okay. So the partners, Serena and I think it's Joaquin. Yeah, Joaquin are working on a new problem. They're given this literal inequality. This is important because I want to use this to help us review for our test tomorrow with literal equations. What do you think makes this a literal inequality? It helps when we look at it. What makes this ax plus b greater than c a literal inequality? Say again? 
because it's in letters, meaning that there are Continuum. multiple variables, yeah. right? Anytime you're dealing with multiple variables, you're looking at what's called a literal equation or a literal inequality. Whenever you're looking at a literal equation or inequality, I saw this on a few people's self-assessments, we really have to pay attention to what variable do we want. What variable are we solving for here? C. I mean X. We're solving for X. That's important because what's happening to that X first? Being multiplied. Being multiplied by? A. A. Then what's happening? A by, I mean A by 5. I mean B. B. So what's the first thing I need to undo? The multiplication. Was that the last thing you said? Oh, no. The, uh, plus, plus uh, B. Remember, the most efficient method is getting rid of or undoing the last thing being done. So, CJ, what am I going to do to undo that plus B? Subtraction. Subtract by? B. B. There you go. <laughs> so, B minus B is that zero. And AX is greater than? Uh, it would be negative six. I don't know. Well, C is positive, and then we are subtracting B. Right? Zay, what do you think we should do next to finally solve for X? I'm only one step away. Um, you said for X? Yep, we're trying to solve for this X. I don't think. Multiplication is the inverse of what? <laughs> yeah, are we dividing by A right now? No, what are, what are we doing with A? Times A. Times A. So then what do we need to do to undo that? Divide. There we go. Notice, and remember, we always want to create those zeros and ones. What is A divided by A? One. One. That's what we want. X. Oh, okay. X. X is what? Equals, I mean, greater than C minus B over A. So why didn't you reverse the direction of that inequality? What are we supposed to? Because you're not yeah. dividing by a negative. Because you divided. Well, we are dividing, but as RJ said, we're not dividing by a negative. But this is an important part to notice here. This is a literal equation, meaning it's multiple variables. Could A be a negative? Yes. If it's a variable? Yes. Would not the variable be negative? Would multiple variables? Well, but here's the thing. A, could it be a negative 3? No. Why not? Because A is not negative. Good. A got to be negative. Hmm? A could be a positive 3. It could be a negative 3. It could be a negative 3. It could be defined as a negative 5. It doesn't have to have a negative in front of it. You can define it as a negative. So this is an important detail to notice, right? If A is positive, then this is true. But what if A was negative? You have to the reverse inequality. You have to reverse that direction. Because you're the bottom. Okay, so now be x is less than c minus b. And that's an important thing to notice. And I'm glad we had that discussion. One, I'm glad we got a chance to work with these literal uh, inequalities that will help us with literal equations. But it is important to notice that we have to think through the fact. Oh, this could be a negative. Well, how would that change my answer? So once you're done making that note, go ahead and get your inequalities understanding check out. Does anyone not have a copy of this inequalities understanding check because they never took it? Uh, it was a week or two ago, week ago. I passed it back recently. It says inequalities understanding check on there. You should. That's it. I graded in purple for those people. Yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. Do you not have a notebook for this class? I do. It is not. You need to start putting yourself in a notebook. You know that you have a notebook understanding check coming up, right? Mm -hmm. A notebook check. Tomorrow. I planned on it being tomorrow. I did have to move it to, I'm having to move it to Monday because I forgot to tell my earlier classes. So you have the weekend to fix it. You have multiple 4.6s? <laughs> no, it, 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 you gave me this. <laughs> yeah, you gave me this. So you, you already finished? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, go ahead and get your inequalities understanding check out.
You gave me that. You got the, the one gave me that. Now, AG, he was nothing. Yes, you did give oh, me that. All right. Either way, I need you to have your inequalities understanding check out. Let's go. <laughs> Man, we gotta move through this quickly. We're behind. Okay, here you go, say we gotta get it done. So, numbers one and two, a lot of students got right. I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you the answers so that you can uh, write it down and try to figure out why that's correct if you missed it. But most people got these two right. Um, but I want to talk about number three because this is one of the most missed questions on the understanding check. How many solutions are there to the inequality in number one? Infinity. Right, guys, if we say x is greater than 24, how many numbers are greater than 24? A lot. Not just a lot. Infinity. Infinitely many. Anytime you're dealing with an inequality, you don't know, have the understanding check? Okay. See, then I didn't know what that was then at that time. Does that make more sense now? Yeah. We talked about it a good bit, but we did talk about it more through 4.6. That's why I'm so CJ, do you need a copy of the understanding check? Uh, I know why now. Okay? So make sure you pay attention to that. Now, one detail I want to point out about this is, and, and this is important for tomorrow's test as well, if you make a mistake, that's okay. But follow through with your mistake. If someone had put the answer B, then they should have actually put B right here as well. Because this is the same inequality that goes, or same graph that goes to that inequality. If you make a mistake, cool, but like pay attention to it. Because if you miss this one, right? Let's say you put B. If you show some work, and don't just randomly put it, if you show some work, you're probably looking at like a 2 on the rubric. But if you then take B here and you say, hey, 17 is not a solution, right? That's why it's an open point. But that's where it ends. And let's say 10 is less than 17, so shading left. True, so true. shading numbers to the left, right? Is that a justification? Does that cover all the, a lot of the main ideas there? Did you get number one right? No. No? But if you pick B and you justify it correctly, like this, I would still let you earn like a five or a six. So it's okay to make mistakes, but just follow through with them. And keep working that way. I'll read with your errors if you make a mistake. I pick C and A. I pick D. Yeah, I pick A. But notice A is less than 24. And you pick D up here? Uh-huh. If you got to the end, and a lot of students did this. A lot of students got here, and then they picked D. And I'm like, guys. Pay attention to the signs, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of students saw the 24 and just picked it, I think. Okay? A lot of people on number four got the hardest part right of the 500 minus 25W. A lot of students did that. But then we floundered when it came to the A or the B. We recognized, hey, he's starting with $500. He's taking away $25 every week. So that's the expression. But if I say at least $200, if I were to tell you, hey, I have at least $200, well, what's a dollar amount that would be at least $200? 200 and 201 is at least 200 isn't it? Yes. So you notice how you went more than 200 So we're greater than 200 A lot of people did because they messed up. And I think on a lot of those, I, and I probably wrote it on yours, I said, give me a number that is at least 200 Did I write something like that on there? You told me why. Why, did you put any justification? I did. I put some justification. And that, so you, like, talk, you talked to me. You talk yeah, to me. I did talk. That's right. I did talk with you afterwards. But notice, you, you, if you don't have any justification, you can't earn anything other than a 4 or a negative 1. Right? And here's the thing. Could you have picked B with some very good reasoning? Yeah, you made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, I thought about it. I just ain't write it down. But here's the thing. Like, if you put B with no justification, what do you automatically earn? 4. Oh, no, no, we got it wrong. That's wrong, so it'd be a negative one. Yes, sir. Even if you pick A and there's no justification, what's the highest you can earn? A three. Four. Justify your crap, guys. 
Take the time to write out and explain why. Okay? It will make a huge difference for your overall grade. Blah, blah, blah. Say again. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I did the work right for number one. I just ain't switching. I, uh, when you, you said, divide it by a negative? Yeah, you said keep your variable throughout the solver. Mm -hmm. Really quickly. I'm going to work through this. If you miss number five, write this down because there was a handful of people that really struggled with this. And that's why I'm going to show this work. Okay. I do want to remind you, when I look here at 4n plus 2n, I saw a lot of students trying to do this. Which, I mean, subtraction is the inverse of addition, right? But did I subtract both sides of the inequality by 2n? No. I can't do that. And also, I don't need to do that. The 4n and 2n are already together. What is 4n plus 2n? Right. Now what would I do? Minus two. Take two. Zero. So five n is greater than fifty. N is greater than ten. Be careful. I think the simplifying is what got a lot of students the most. However. 7 and 8 are where I want to focus for now. Again, we should, now should be pretty good on number 8. What's the answer for number 8? Number 8. No. Oh, I got it. Number 8, I got it. No, I got it wrong. You didn't get it wrong. Oh, yeah, you didn't get it wrong. JK. Guys, if we're dealing with an inequality, how many solutions are there? It's a family meeting. Yeah, how many things are greater than 10? Infinitely, Infinitely many. many. So Remember, there's only one number here, 10, but even 10 is not a solution. What things make this inequality true? Infinitely many things. Ah, uh, yeah, so. Right? Uh, I if I'm left with a statement, n is greater than 10, notice I even, sh you would shade it here. How many things are you shading? Okay. Infinitely many. Now, I did see a lot of students pick B on number 8, and I think that was because of number 7. Right? Yeah, yeah. However, notice it says two possible solutions. Does that say that's all of them? No. No. You know N is greater than 10. Yes, sir. So which of these have numbers that are greater than 10? Number D. Number D? Letter D. Letter D, right? 11 and 13. Those are the only two things that were greater than 10. Now, I do want to remind you of this. Is it possible that you did your work incorrectly? Yes. But if you took the time and said, hey, 11 is greater than 10, or 13 is greater than 10, or if you thought n was, if you put d here, n is greater than 7, right? If you just showed me some justification showing me that you understand those are solutions, I would have let you earn credit. You've got to justify your stuff, though. Another thing I do want you to remember, and this is important, what do you know about all of these inequalities that I am starring right now? Equivalent. Not equal. Equivalent. They're equivalent. We use our properties of inequality to create each of these, right? Which means they may look different, but they're effectively the same. So what makes this true makes and right? This is just the easiest one to look at, is the whole idea. That's the easiest one to see my solutions. But couldn't you have plugged these numbers in back to the original inequality? If they're solutions, they make the inequality true. Don't forget that. And don't make your life harder than it has to be. Um, yes, keep the code number nine. Like how to solve it? Yes. Two divided by two is one. Three x plus fifteen, less than negative sixty, minus fifteen. Three x is less than negative seventy-five. Oh. X is less than negative twenty-five. See your mistake? I put the um instead of doing thirty times two, I just did fifteen uh, minus uh, thirty. 
I just forgot to do the times yeah. two at some point. Yeah, and you you marked it out and put negative sixty. Right, because it should have been that negative thirty times two. Okay. So what I want to talk about with this one, what I saw most people missing credit on with this, is I saw a lot of students doing this. Does anyone know what's wrong with this number line? It doesn't start at zero. Yeah. It doesn't have to start at zero. But I do want you to think about this. If I kept going this direction, would I ever get to zero? No. No. You get People flip their number lines. People get negative, negative oh, yeah. Okay. Now I will say, Amity, I like to start at zero because it makes it easier for me to recognize which direction I'm supposed to be going. Because now I'm going to do this. Notice I'm not going to go by ones because that's grody and it would take me forever. But can I go by fives? Have I clearly indicated the correct direction on the number line? Right? At negative 25, should I put an open point or a closed point? Uh, oh, open. Oh, open. Oh, oh, oh. Will negative 25 make that inequality true? Yes. Negative 25 is less than negative 25? No, no. No? So it needs to be an open point. Yeah. Open. If it's not a solution, it's an open point. Okay. And then I shade towards my solutions. Okay. Right? And I believe I asked y'all to do set notation on this one, right? Uh, no, no. Yeah. It just say show you work graphic solution. But remember, on the board I wrote, "Hey, do set notation on this one," because I forgot to write it, put it on the sheet. Notice though, it's set notation. So I'm going to start off with the curly brackets. What comes next? X. X. Three line. The vertical line for when. X equals is an element. Oh, element. That's that E. Numbers. The real numbers. Notice we're doing every number, right? It's all the decimals, all the fractions, all the everything. So it's real numbers. But is it all real numbers? No. So that's why we need to put the inequality. And literally, I just pulled the inequality that's there. I saw some people trying to put the infinities and messing it all up. Whatever inequality is here, that's where it goes. Okay? In case you solved number 10 incorrectly, here's what you should have gotten that should give you a little bit of practice. You can check yourself, make sure you're doing it right. Um, and then for this interval notation, if x is less than or equal to 8, it's going to keep going less than 8. What's it eventually going to get to? Not infinity. Remember, it's going to keep going. So it's going to get to negative infinity. That's going to be my minimum value. Bracket or parenthesis on that negative infinity? Parenthesis. Yeah, you can't ever equal it. What is the maximum value? Eight. Can you equal that eight? Yes. It literally says less than or. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a bracket. We get with that idea. Okay. All right, this was an important thing, and I think a lot of us have gotten better at number 11, but I do want to make sure we go over this, because I saw some very incorrect answers here. Why do we have to be careful with negatives and inequalities? When the value multiplied by a negative number, and the negative So when multiplying or dividing oh, I see it. both sides of the inequality. Notice I'm making sure that I'm not including cases of distribution, right? When I'm multiplying or dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative, the direction of the inequality is reversed. That is something you have to make sure you know completely. Now, there's something else I do want to add to this I want you to remember. That's a part of the properties of inequalities. What is the point of these properties of inequalities? So if I don't reverse the direction, is it going to be equivalent? No. No, so we need to remember that. The direction of the inequality is reversed to create equivalent inequalities.
Okay. If you do not have that, we should probably take that note down. I see CJ doing a great job of taking notes on that. Some of us, not as much. How many questions on the kid? Thirteen. Oh. Nope. Amity did it in what? Thirty minutes? Wait. You, you did it today? Okay. She just did. She literally she just took it. it. That's where she was at the beginning of class. Oh. No way. Was it? I knew the X. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't think it was bad. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you might listen to this one. But you should definitely study for it, because if you don't study, it will be rough. Yeah, I'm studying for it. Well. All right. So this performance assessment that I just handed out, this is actually also going to be basically a part of the test. Oh. This is a, an assessment. However, this is a small group assessment, and we're going to go ahead and use it right now as a part of our review. Working within your small group, you get to talk with each other and ask questions and push on each other's ideas and things like that. And I know it's not a whole lot of time. We're going to do what we can with it. But this is actually a really cool idea. So here are some magic tricks that you can use to amaze your friends with your mind reading skills. In this task, you'll figure out why these tricks work and learn how to create similar tricks of your own. Try you wake earlier? <laughs> so let's begin by trying out the following trick. Follow the instructions carefully and record the results you get after each step. If you choose to do this magic trick with someone else, ask them to do each step in their heads rather than recording the results on paper. Okay? Uh, you can then pretend to concentrate really hard as you try to read their minds before telling them what number they are thinking of at the end of the trick. So earlier today, we have already tried the numbers 4, 8, we did 5, and we did 3. Our job is to pick a number between 1 and 10. One other than these four. Because I've already done this. What's another number you all want to try between 1 and 10? 1, 10, 7. Or 10, what did you say? Nine. All right, we're going to pay between 10 and 9, just because those are the first two set. Raise your hand if you want 10. Raise your hand if you want 9. We've got 10, 1, 9, 1, 9. I want okay. 10. You want 10? Want so we're 2 and 2. What do you all want? 10 or 9? 10. 10, 10. Go with 10. All right. So we pick the number 10. Subtract 1 from your number. A 9. 9. Okay. Multiply the number you got by 3. 27. Okay. Cool. Add 12 to the number you got in step 3. 39. Okay. Divide the number you got by 3. 12. Close. 13. Yeah. Notice 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Should we write so 13 here? I'm wrong. Uh, we're just going through an example. Okay. Add 5 to the number you got in step 5. Uh, uh, 13. I mean 18. 18. Now subtract your original number, the number you picked in step one. Ten. Mm, eight. So, well, we started with ten, so we're down to eight. And now, for the magical reveal, you are now thinking of the number eight. What the heck? No, it's not. Hey, <laughs> Every single number that's been picked today it's has included. always led to, number eight. to the number eight. Because they equivalent. They're, well, they're, it's not kind of. There's some idea of equivalency here. It's more about the operations that were done to get there. And this is why we're using this as a little bit of review. Your job is to figure out why this magic trick works by writing out each step symbolically. Begin by letting uh, x represent the number chosen in step one, and then write an algebraic expression to represent the result after each subsequent step. So step one was x. What, what did we do to that x? We subtracted one. So we got x minus one. In step three, what did we do? We divide, we multiply by three. Multiply by three. So how would I write that? This is the last step I'm going to do with you. Oh, this is times three. Yeah, times three. So three x, like that? Yes, you all agree? Three x, that's it? Wait, whoa, whoa. Why not? Whoa, Remember, we're taking the number we got in step two, we're multiplying that by three. So we're multiplying x minus one by three. So how would we write this? Minus one times. Okay, why did we have to put parentheses around the x minus one? Why couldn't we just say three x minus one? Because x minus one is a problem in itself. Okay. Is it? It's more of an expression on its own, right? It's, it's the first. It's the next number. Isn't the x minus one together? Yeah. 
So I need to multiply the x minus 1, the, the number from step 2, by 3. Then you'll notice in step 4, you're going to take the number from step 3 and add 12 to it. So go ahead and work within your groups. Try to write the expressions through step 7, and then start answering the next part of the next few problems. I know we won't get very far today, but do what you can with it, because we're going to wrap this up on Monday, and this will help you review as well for the test tomorrow. So work within your group. This is a group assessment. So whatever one of you makes, you will all make. So I'm going to grade one person from each group. So if you all have different answers, and someone wrote it down wrong, and that's the one I grade, that's not good for your group. So make sure you're working together, discussing ideas, okay? Okay, you really you notice that's not, we're saying that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be three times that. Yeah. Really sorry. Alright, so step four, step five, step six, step seven.